Well, there's been a range of, uh, vic of rather witness testimony, and all of it has been extremely compelling. You had the store clerk, you had a paramedic. You have a, uh, a bystander who happened to, be, happened to be a martial arts expert, uh, another paramedic who was on duty and who took George Floyd away in the ambulance. But all of it was really compelling. But I think what the most uh, compelling testimony that stood out for me were uh, Lieutenant Richard Zimmerman, who was the senior most police officer in the Minneapolis Police Department. He testified that, that uh, Derek Chauvin went beyond his training uh, when he leaned on George Floyd's knee or George Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes, a little bit over nine minutes. That was very strong to me because for the first time, you have police officers in the uh, defendant's own department saying that uh, he exceeded his training capacity and he used unnecessary force. Beyond that, all of the witness testimony was emotional. It was sort of a Rashomon effect only in 3D. All three, all of the witnesses uh, said they saw the same thing, and it, 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 it exposes uh, Chauvin to a very, very perilous uh, conviction. Indeed, it, do, it does. They are saying the same thing, and, and, and Chauvin's knee on Floyd's, uh, on Floyd's neck, that's what they're talking about. And as awful as that imagery is, though, my understanding is the prosecution will need to prove that this is definitively what killed Floyd. Aside from the emotions, how do they prove that? Well, they're going to prove it by putting George Floyd on trial. This is standard in most proceedings that uh, involve a police-related shooting, that the victim was someone who had superhuman strength or who was wild and needed to be controlled by extraordinary measures. Uh, they're going to do that by citing Floyd's drug use. They're going to talk about his character. They're going to put him on trial. But the problem that they have here is that the first week of evidence was so compelling, and the cross-examination didn't really make very much inroads in making these witnesses unreliable. They saw what they saw. They stood by what they saw. They were not angry. They were not vengeful against the officers. So that is going to be a problem that, in addition to putting Floyd on trial, they will have to overcome. What is the significance of this trial during this moment in America? Uh, it's where do we start? I mean, we've got a pandemic that has exposed inequality across race and class. We've got a, a trial that galvanized people around the world uh, against police brutality. And the hurdle that the defense has to go over it is enormous. I mean, we have one eyewitness video that pretty much ignited the whole world and that gave proof to what black people have been saying in this country for years, that the police are using excessive force when it comes to them. That is a very, very high bar that has been rarely cleared. And if it gets cleared, America uh, can move forward. If it does not get cleared, then we stand the risk of reverting back into the old paradigm where this doesn't exist and not even nine minutes of eyewitness video, not even a horde of witnesses who, com who confirm what they saw in the video can overcome the fact that a police can, can use excessive force almost with impunity when it comes to black bodies. And no doubt for many Americans watching this who are familiar with the violence like this in America, they are reliving this trauma personally. But going forward, what's next in the trial in week two? Well, in week two, we're going to hear more prosecution witnesses, probably some forensics experts, to talk about exactly how George Floyd died. We're probably going to hear from another eyewitness or two, but then the defense will start, and that is going to be really, really intense because the, the, the courthouse is surrounded. It's almost like a fortress, and when the defense goes on trial, it's going to strike even more trauma. Uh, among people who are witnessing it from the outside because it was a flashpoint in American history that healing is going to have to happen at some point, but it will not happen until we get some conclusion from this trial and some closure in this particular case.